Greetings everyone and welcome back to a special Kedic review. Why is it special? Because it gets to merge two of my favorite things. TV shows and video games. Now, TV shows based on video games have a history and it's not a good one. Sure, you have cult favorites and guilty pleasures like the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, but in others you have things like The Legend of Zelda, or, or per, perhaps other things like Pac-Man, there's many iterations, but it's not every day that a mature take on a video game is done. Evan knows that most movies can't get it done. But, leave it to Netflix. Yes, that Netflix. Home, home of the perfect 10 out of 10 shows that have been previously covered on this channel, like BoJack Horseman and Horseman and Voltron, but also the same studio that has lesser known stuff like Glitter Force. To take their stab at a video game adaptation, and not just any video game, but the subject of the review today. Castlevania. Now I would be remiss. If I didn't bring up this, Castlevania, also, also known as Vampire Killer in Japan, has been a long-term video game series making its start in 1985 with the aforementioned first Castlevania game. Since there have been over 20 such games, the last one unfortunately being part of the Lords of Shadow lore. Since then, it's been more than a decade since the word Castlevania has echoed through video game halls, any halls for that matter, up due to the inner problems at Konami between its studio execs its former lead heads, and of course the highly publicized trouble with Hideo Kojima. That's why it came to a shock when Castlevania was announced as an anime original series for the streaming service. Many people had their doubts. And then about a week ago, a teaser came out. But now, the actual series is here. And let me tell you. This is the best interpretation of the Castlevania lore that has ever been put to anything. Ever. The only negative is it's over so soon that you thirst like a vampire for more. Going directly from the video game source material, but going into a darker, more introspective, more character-driven story structure, but letting the gothic architecture, the bloody violence, and the religious overtones be turned up to 11. And it starts, oddly, by looking at the villain first. Now, here come the spoilers if you haven't seen it, and there'll be a warning in the description as well. So, be forewarned. This is the part where you end if you don't mind, if you don't want spoilers. For that effect. Fast forward to the end of the review to get the score you desire. Okay. Spoiler shield is up. Let us begin. 
the story is about the two sides more often than not, but it first starts out by explaining Dracula's side. Dracula uses the name that he's more referred to in the Bran Stroker books, going by Vlad Temp's Dracula. He manages to take in a young, young lady who wants to practice medicine and science. And it seems for a time that the two have been in wedded bliss. But as hell would have it, the religious right views her as a witch. And soon thereafter, in 1475, in the town of Valencia, she is burned at the stake. Dracula, naturally, is not, and should not, by any medical reason, be pleased by this. This and sends a hellish warning to Valencia. Lindsay and the religious right to come clear with their God in one year for wrath is coming. Something that his son Alucard doesn't agree with. She wouldn't like Dracula to go all hellish evil and pay more honor Honor to his beloved by staying on the side of good. But Dracula's mind is made up with with a bloody slap to his son. And by the hellish undertone and symbolism of raining blood, one year later his wrath is, as promised, brought in a bloody, violent, gore-fested, fested scene of mass murder and death. Oh, did I mention this anime series is not for kids? As Dracula's hordes in his moving castle, nice move there, Castlevania, looms over any land that he sees, we are then introduced to Trevor Belmont. But this isn't the holier than thou, thou, I'm a badass Trevor Belmont from games like Curse of Darkness. No, this has a different spin. See, this Trevor is aloof. Dry, sarcastic, not really interested in feeling other people's problems or getting involved. He just so happens, after winning a brutish bar fight over the fact that he is from the family of Belmont, who in this story has been excommunicated by the church because of their practice of magic in order order to deal away with Dracula's demons, manages like a true badass, even while drunk, to battle his way through, through the bar with victory. But he find, finds himself in the town of Garrett, who will soon come, up, come under Dracula's hordes yet again after another bloody night. But, young people, young people under the church, known as speakers, speakers are there trying to do whatever they can to help the sick and ailing. But, when one of the, one of the speakers goes missing in one of the catacombs, Trevor reluctantly agrees to get the speaker out, not without fighting a cyclops, of course, 
He soon there finds Sarah, the lead speaker's daughter, who just so happens to know magic herself, brings her back and do, due to a very wondrous speaker speech, manages manages to bring Trevor Trevor back to somewhat of the hero we know him as but not before having a religious based showdown down with one of the bitches of the church who who looks to be the only religious person left with his own with his own views on how the problem should be handled and how people should be treated if they don't believe totally in the church this guy and the entire religious right is corrupt. After all, they falsely burned an innocent doctor to the stake. That just so happened to be the wrong doctor. Meanwhile, Alucard's been asleep for a year and has been looking for forward to it seems young Trevor and young Seraph to help him take old Daddy Dearest down a peg. Trevor is a joker, sarcastic, doesn't like getting into fights, is somewhat cocky and self assured, very rebellious rebellious and inquisitive while still having the badass skill to deal with Alucard one on one in a fight in which the fight scenes are beautifully animated and done and really helps bring Trevor's character all the way through but that's one of the strong points of Castlevania the character and story Castlevania's story has always been simplistic. Dracula is evil, and you are the good guy. But it has never been told with so much context, fiber, and fervor as it's been done here. This is almost like if Game of Thrones and Castlevania had a baby due to its use of many backwards tongue and medieval dialogue, but it fits the gothic setting almost perfectly and the sense of death that permeates through the entire show truly gives you gives you a sense of Dracula's true evil and control trolling is now overly evil form that even he admits upon his first hellish genocide that he will regret his lifelong decision to become, become the evil creature that we know him is. And the fact that we know before that he has a heart makes Dracula's story almost and very tragic. Which almost makes you wonder what side you really should be on. It's all within perfect and escalating context, and every bit of the players and stage have been set beautifully, and even the wor world's tone towards the Belmont says this stain upon religious humanity is thought out, well thought out, and really delivered thematically throughout. The animations and gothic architecture range between the 2D and the 3D. Sometimes it clashes, but it's artful. The scenes are big, bold, and dark when they need to be, with always a looming, looming shadow painted underneath. It's al almost like the inner workings workings of the darker tones of the later Castlevania games have come to life here and through the character setup everything is well defined and 
set for the just now greenlit season two with the only real problem is that it's only four episodes deep a combined two hours of your time taken almost like a small movie but due to its medic execution its proper storytelling telling and its grim setup of the battles to come I only desire more. More with the use of swords and of course the legendary vampire killer whip showing its devilish power in episode 4 to max, max effect, effect while setting, setting the heroes up perfectly in their respective roles, in their relationship that is built upon Dracula's curse primarily and it is executed very well done with a dark gothic overtone in the credits, credits and a dark toned music, none no references to the original game musically are made here but let's hope over time some of those classic tracks come out. But even if they don't, the music sets the dark phonetic tone that is needed almost instantly. For a series so quick and so done with its first season, the phonetic setup and the execution of one arc to even begin the larger arc of the defeat of Dracula is executed perfectly. Both sides, good and evil, given their reasons and their phonetic and emotional tones, the world around of the innocents, unsure of which they stand, and everybody trying to get a piece, piece of this world crafted out of inner hell. Castlevania finally has something of a life, a beating heart. I would love to see the video games executed in just this same fashion. The universe brought to video, video game life to be played. I only hope that Konami realizes the gift that they have been given. The writers, animators, and voice actors should all be praised. For two hours, it is two hours of perfection. This review score is not a miserable pile of secrets. This is a truth. Castlevania lies right up there with Bojack Horseman and other original series of its type as as the best that Netflix has delivered and one of the best gothic anime deliveries to ever be done and put on page in recent memory. I can only hope season two comes quickly because I desire more blood. I desire more Castlevania. A 10 out of 10. What are your thoughts upon Castlevania? And would you like to see this interpretation turned back into the game it originally was? Who is your favorite character? And what would you like to see in the upcoming season too? Tell me down in the comment section below. And until next time, find peace in your own nirvana. And thanks for watching.